Here I'm going to sketch out for you the derivation of Einstein's most famous equation, e equals mc squared and special relativity. And we're going to do that by setting up our work integral like we did in the classical case. But for the force, the dp dt is going to be using our relativistic p, which is mv over the square root of the 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now when v is small compared to the speed of light, you have the mv. But in the relativistic case, we have to deal with this. Now, our first step is going to be playing with some chain rule tricks. d dt of this is going to be d dv of that times dv dx dx dt. dx dt is going to be your v, and your dv dx dx is going to be the dv. Now, I, I said that fast, but that's an assignment for you to do, work out those details but that's what's going to happen. You're going to be able to get this by replacing this with a d dv, dv dx, dx dt, dx dt gets you the v, and the dv dx of the dx is going to give you a dv. Then you use integration by parts to do this integral, which you can think of by the product rule for derivatives. If you have d dv of some product, it's the derivative of the first you know, times the second, plus the uh, first times derivative of the second. And what you're basically doing here is saying, I want to do an integral where the d dv is operating on that v, which will give me a one. I'd rather do that integral rather than this one. And I don't have to pay much of a price because when I do that replacement, I do get another integral, but this is a perfect differential. When I integrate this with respect to dv, I simply get fg. So the way you can think of this is I want to move the ddv from, say, f to the g. And if I do that, I simply subtract one of these to the other side. So if I subtract this one over there, then the df the dv with the g there is equal to this derivative of this product and then minus the other one. So you can think of this as put the ddv on this one here. If we're going to do that, pop this one over to here, then we're going to basically have this replaced by a perfect differential here and a minus sign when we move that over. So Remember, once again, you're doing these details. I'm just giving you an overview here. So when you do that, you get the ddv of the perfect differential here, the product. Now, this is the f that's inside the parentheses, and this is the g. So when you multiply those, you get mv squared over all this. And then the minus sign, you can pop this over to the other, the dv dv, to get you a 1, and you have this. Now. When you look at this, you say, well, this is going to be worth doing because now I have a v there. I can have a 2v there and a 1 half, and I'll be able to do this integral. And here, there's nothing to do because this is a, this is a gift because the, the derivative and the integral is going to cancel, and I'll simply lift that right out of there. So when you work this out at this stage, this first integral is very, very easy. You just simply lift that out. And this one I'm asking you to do without looking up in the book because you can doctor this up by putting, you know, a two there and divide by one the two one half and then you basically have this integral that you're it's going to be then a plus one half instead of the minus one half so you should be able to do this integral without looking things up you using standard integration uh, tricks and then you put in your limits here zero to v if we're starting off here at rest we're going to start this one off at rest and when you do that this will be easy to put these uh, values in and when you get that, now here's where the surprise is. When you get the surprise, you find that when you start from zero and go to velocity v, when you start from zero, you have energy, see, the rest energy. So that's the key right there. When v is equal to zero, uh, you basically, you're subtracting here the initial, the initial energy, and it's not zero. So when you do this, uh, you can look at this here, this subtraction, as this is the general form for the energy at speed v, and this is the version of it when the v is zero. So here is your general form, and when v is zero, you get the mc squared, and that is the derivation of the famous result. Now, your kinetic energy is to take your total energy and subtract the rest energy from that and this is energy of the motion and when you do that and do a Taylor series expansion simply use your binomial uh, expansion there uh, a plus b that quantity to the nth power you know when you do that you will find that 
you get simply the one half mv squared. You can almost see that here. It's going to come out that way because this is to the negative one half power. And when you do the expansion, you get a one, and then you get you'll get uh, the uh, negative one half will come out of there from the negative one half power, and then you'll get this term in here, which already has a negative sign. So it's basically c squared is canceling, and you'll get a one half v squared. Now I'm asking you to do this. I'm just showing you here why it's going to work. It, it, that first term is going to come in there. And the first term with the v is going to come in there and take care of you. And the very first term with the one, these are going to cancel. And you'll get the kinetic energy in the non-relativistic limit by expanding and neglecting you know, v over c higher powers, just keeping the first one.